took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, behold, the virgin. Now, some people want to say that's simply a phrase referring to the maiden, a young woman. The virgin shall be with a child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated means God with us. Now, that may seem trivial to some people. Oh, yeah, God is always with us. He's with us everywhere we go. We're all made in, and God loves us all and God's love. No, this is talking about leaving heaven, putting on flesh, God incarnate. What in Spanish you would say, God con carne, right? And coming to this world to accomplish a mission and a purpose to save people, a people for himself. Virgin shall be with child, and shall bear a son, they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. God literally with us. Now, today in our culture, nobody wants to accept or to believe that. And that's why, folks, if I show you all kinds of philosophy and apologetics and reasons to believe in a God, you're still, at the end of all of that verified truth, you're still going to have to make a leap. And that leap is a leap of faith. You see, God has never prepared it so that we could come to Him through mental ability or a sin. Yes, we can know Him and we can learn about Him and we can grow in our understanding. But ultimately, my salvation and your salvation is going to be based on faith because of what happened in the garden. Adam and Eve were supposed to trust God there. They would have stayed in a perfect garden, stayed in a perfect state. Now you and I have the opportunity to be restored to the image of God and to experience what God has for us as His people throughout eternity. But just like they had to hang on to it by faith, you and I have to come to Him by faith and be gracious, forgive, and receive, and keep us for Himself. Notice in verse 24. Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary as his wife and kept her a maiden. No, you do it. You can't keep her a maiden. She's going to grow up. She's going to get old, right? He can't keep her a maiden, but he can keep her a virgin until when she gave birth to a son and called his name Jesus. And so, biblically speaking, there's no doubt that the claim is the virgin birth of Jesus. Why is that important? Who cares? Well, folks, if he had had the DNA of Joseph, he would have had a full-blown sin nature just like me. But he didn't. He had the DNA that God had prepared to create a body for his son. The book of Hebrews tells us this. And that DNA, there with Mary, creates the God-man. 100% God, 100% man. A miraculous, miraculous event, the most important one in history. Now you think it's tough for Santa to get up and down chimneys, and you think that it's difficult to keep reindeer going the right direction and make it every child in the world. You try becoming 100% God and 100% man and come back and let me know how it goes. See, this is a work of God. But the thing that you need to grab onto is not how incredible it is, but that He did it for you. He did it for you. And so we're going to be faced with the same temptations that Adam and Eve are in the garden to turn away from this God who has done everything to make us and to save us and to live our lives for trivial reasons that won't matter at all in eternity. And to not respond to receive Him as Lord and Savior because we're afraid of something we're going to lose or give up when in fact we're going to lose our life and everything that matters by putting Him second or turning Him away. Notice in the Gospel of Luke, Chapter 1, verse 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin. We can talk about that. Engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the descendants of David. 
and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming in, he said to her, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Now, if you keep track of the news, especially any cultural news, you'll, you'll know that this last week, uh, some professor at Ivy League school declared that actually God had, in fact, uh, not asked Mary's permission to impregnate her with the Christ child. That it was basically a heavenly rape. And I, I want you to hear this. I don't want you to hear that I'm saying anything about that other than this. Your world is turning away from Jesus. Oh no, don't say it's turning away from God. No, no, no. You may have seen a, a, a meme on Facebook recently that showed a man saying that, that he hates homosexuals, that he wants to uh, uh, keep women in their place, all these kinds of things. It, it was really horrible. And this young lady looks at him and says, how dare you be so bigoted and uh, mis mis I can't say the word, misogynist and all that sort of thing. And he says, oh, no way. I'm Islamic. Oh, I'm sorry, she says. I apologize. What? What? Why would it be a thing for her to slap him down unless he is of a particular religion? How can Islam and feminism exist together? I don't know, but they did a parade last year. I can tell you about because the word of God promises that the day is going to come when all the world is going to turn against Jesus and Christians and Israel. And not too long after that, the worst war in the history of the universe that we will ever see on this planet is going to happen. And at the end of that, Jesus comes and brings it to an end. We have to walk through this territory. But folks... Already the world is moving rapidly toward the rejection of biblical truth. Notice in verse 29. She was very perplexed about this thing and what was going to happen. She kept pondering, what kind of salutation is this? The angel said to her, don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. Giving her information, verse 32, he will be great. And will be called son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel. How can this be? Since I'm just a young woman. <laughs> oh, come on wake up people. It doesn't say because I'm just a young woman. Because I, I've not had any experience of being with man. And so God is at work in a powerful way to accomplish his purpose. Notice if you would in verse 35, the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Now folks, don't get any kind of uh, sexual innuendo in this. The Spirit of God was at work to create on the earth the things that you and I see as God spoke, the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the deep, and things happened. God spoke these things into existence. The Spirit of God brought it to pass. And so that, that reason, the angel says, the holy child shall be called the Son of God. And behold, even your, Elizabeth, uh, your relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age. You know, I used to wonder, why is this important? But you know, the original promise of a coming Messiah came to a man named Abram, who God called Abraham. That little extra thing that he added to his name was breath, the Spirit of God. And so Sarai becomes Sarah. And in that process, they become the tools of God to bring redemption to the world. And what was their problem? Well, they were both already old. 
And they needed to have an heir. But they couldn't have a child. It wasn't possible. And yet God promised a child. And at the very time he's going to fulfill the promise of this coming child, he also reminds us of Abraham and Sarah by having Elizabeth conceive a son in her old age. So she's six months pregnant when all this is going on with Mary. What is she told? For nothing will be impossible with God. Now look, if, if you're struggling today, if you have questions in your life, if, if you don't know what's next, if you don't know how to handle some situation, I want you to write that last phrase down. And I want you to take that to your prayer closet. And I want you to lay out the issues of your life. And I want you to say to God, God, I know nothing is impossible for you. Now I have to warn you. If you're going to ask God to make somebody change, See, it was free will that God had to give Adam and Eve that made it possible for them to choose to sin. But they couldn't choose to obey. They couldn't choose to show their love unless they had free will. It's going to be your free will decision to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. God's not going to make you do that either. But keep in mind that you'll be accountable for the choice that you make of what to do with Jesus like they were accountable for the choice that they made. In the Garden of Eden as well. That's why God had to send a Redeemer. Nothing is impossible for God. As you look at verse 38. Mary, right, she didn't give God permission. According to this professor. Mary said, Behold the bond slave of your Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Does that sound like permission? Everybody says Does that sound like permission. Does that sound like permission to you? Okay. The angel departed from her. Now at this time Mary arose and went in a hurry to the hill country. That's what my family did every summer. School would let out. We'd head to the hill country in a hurry. You know how that went. Why was she in a hurry to the hill country? She was going to see Elizabeth, her aunt, who was six months pregnant. She walks into the house. Elizabeth hears Mary's greeting and the baby leaps inside of Elizabeth's womb. And Elizabeth is filled with the Holy Spirit. Now again, there would be a lot of people that would want to say, oh, that, that baby's just jumping and there's nothing to all that sort of thing. And that's fine. They can say it. But today I want you to understand that at Little Cypress Baptist Church, we believe that the Word of God is in fact the Word of God. Amen. And that is in fact what happened. And so as you see this event come to place in verse 42, she cries out in a loud voice. This is Elizabeth talking to Mary. And as far as we know, they've had no conversations because this was just the greeting the first time they had heard each other, right? He cries out in a loud voice and says, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how is it that has happened to me that the mother of my Lord would come to me? You hear what she's saying? How does she know this? Because God has revealed it. For behold, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she, referring to Mary, who believed that there would be the fulfillment of what has been spoken to her by the Lord. How many Jewish young women thought that they might maybe wind up being the one that would birth Messiah? And yet it would be Mary. Elizabeth talks about the joy that she has in that process. You think about the role of family in all this. You see aunts and uncles and all of these people that are involved as relatives in the things that are going on. Well, 
from Romans 8, verse 14. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. That's family too. For you have not received the spirit of slavery. God's not going to enslave you. And as a Christian, you shouldn't allow yourself to be slaved by sin. That that slavery would lead you to fear again. But you have received the spirit of what? What is it? Adoption. Adoption as son, by which we call cry out, Daddy. That's what that word means. Daddy, Father. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are the children of God. That was what was happening in Mary. That was happening in Elizabeth. The Spirit of God was testifying to them the realities of what's going on. And the Spirit of God will testify with your spirit once you have received Jesus that you are, in fact, a child of God. Oh, no, the enemy will try to make you doubt. But one of the things that is the very clearest and should be for a lot of people that when we're a Christian and we start living in ways that we shouldn't, there are consequences that come for our choices. These ways that God uses to get our attention. And sometimes these spankings that we get from heaven remind us of the fact that God is paying attention to his kids. And he loves them too much to leave them in slavery to sin. So, if we're children, we're also heirs. Heirs of God. Fellow heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with Him so that we may be glorified with Him. Everybody would like to leave off the last part of the sentence. Say, ah. Uh, no, I'm joking. Don't, don't. Just kidding. <laughs> but it's in there, is it not? That's just like what the angel said. Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth. Then we want to stop it right there. But it doesn't stop right there. And peace on earth with men with whom God is well pleased. You see, there is a, a response that we're making, not that saves us.